Ash. <laughs> it's not when I use it. I'll be like, we're live. Hello. <laughs> there we go. I just nearly carried on chunnering on about that. <laughs> we're we're live. Okay. I feel like I need to put my chair down. Well, you, I think you are taller than me in real life, I reckon. So Five we'll find out next week. We'll find out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This week? Don't get the date yeah, wrong. <laughs> yes. Don't turn up next week. In a couple of days. Yes. So, yeah. oh, I'm so excited about that, though. Who cares if we win or not? It'll just be <laughs> lovely to, to finally meet up. So, yes, for anyone watching, we're just chatting away here. Just like, yeah, no, 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 no. But, uh, yeah, this session, we've got uh, Sarah Townsend, who is the author of Survival Skills for Freelancers. Fabulous book, which uh, I read before I wrote mine, actually. Um, I remember when you first launched it, and I, yeah, I yeah. got it on my Kindle, I believe. Very good. But it's got great um, message, and I think it's a similar theme to mine, of really just getting your head in the right space and things, isn't it? Just changing mindset, at least, yeah. 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 There are so, so many books out there, aren't there, that are all about how to write a business plan and how to do all the practical stuff. Whereas I think you and I are both focused on what's in here and what's in here and yeah. just how important that is. Oh yeah. I didn't want to write about things like that and tax and I am <laughs> definitely not the, the expert on that. There's a reason no, I'm not an accountant. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. So yeah, we've got a very similar theme and I think, um, and, you know, I'm seeing what you're doing as well outside of that with lots of other things that we're going to talk about that I think are yeah. really inspiring, really nice. So, but tell us a bit about your business, actually. Tell us what you do, first of all. Um, yeah, so I've been a freelance marketing copywriter for 22 years. And what that means, kind of the day job is helping business owners um, and marketing managers to kind of communicate clearly the things that make their business special and different and stand out from the crowd. And I tend to do that for mainly purpose-led businesses, mainly website copywriting, just because since I published the book Survival Skills for Freelancers last summer, I've had a lot less time to do the copywriting and I'm being a lot more picky and just working with people I really want to work with, which is lovely. But yeah, last summer, I um, self-published this, Pink pink versus Blue. Yeah. <laughs> pink versus the Blue. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm starting to feel, even though I haven't seen it yet, but from what I've heard and what you've said about your book, I'm thinking that they're probably a perfect partnership. I Actually, kind so, of one yeah. really will support the other, so I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, so yeah, since um, self-publishing the book, it's had like 330 odd five-star reviews on Amazon. It's got, it's really taken off. It's really helped a lot of people get, as you say, the mindset of self-employment, which is so so important and tackle the challenges and from doing that I've never done a podcast interview a live event a webinar a workshop yeah. in my life and now I've done over 100 in a year I've become a mentor for the government's help to grow scheme and for the freelance home 100 scheme I'm also doing my own mentoring I'm developing courses at the moment to support what I'm doing so yeah I sort of turned my life upside down and I'm kind of really excited to see how it does the same for you because I've no doubt it will you've just done exactly what I did you've just thrown <laughs> your heart and soul into yeah. the process and we're all on the outside kind of looking in getting so much of you as a person and I just think that's that's the secret ingredient with what makes a great book yeah. people are reading the book and they can hear your voice just as oh, they yeah. my voice in mind so <laughs> yeah, yeah I think I, I think it we're sharing our heart on our sleeve stories aren't we ultimately yes. we're sort of sharing our own advice so that we can help other people to become successful more quickly and with fewer mistakes I yeah get the impression that you've done the same with yours so yeah and that's, yeah. that's definitely been a big thing that's come back in the, the feedback that people have been really liking that it's got a real sense of me in it and yes there are some stories that are you know not exactly the happiest but the way I've dealt yeah. with them and talked about them and then shown that you move on it's it, you know it's it's a, it's not doom and gloom. It's just yeah. establishing where oh, yeah. the reality of where things can be and where you can get to. And yeah. um, people, have, yeah, have been really responding to that so far. So, but like you say, I mean, Erin, who I've just been live with, has constantly been saying like, "Oh, you should be doing some coaching and some mentoring," and all the way through, I've been going, "No, no, no." And then I'm like, "Oh, no, actually." But only <laughs> like if you want to, right? Yeah. You know, if that's not where you feel driven to go, then don't do it. But don't be like me, because I naively thought I'd write a book, 
publish a book, go back to the day job 100% of the yeah. time, which has not happened. And, and everything that's happened has been just so fantastic for me because I'm kind of on this mission to help the small business community and freelancers, entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call them, to really um, recognize the importance of prioritizing your mental well being and your own physical health when you're self employed because when we don't do that, it's really easy for that day-to-day -day stress to become overwhelmed and for that overwhelm in the long term to become burnout. And if you crash and burn as a small business owner, you've got no business left. So yes. I feel a little bit like I'm on a mission now. And because that's been my own experience, I've had my own mental health challenges to talk fairly openly about that. And yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't want other people to go through what I went through. I don't want other people to be starting a business and not feel like they have a voice that they can relate to throughout the process someone who is going to put kind of a comforting arm around their shoulder and go come on you've got this you know you can do this this is yeah this is this is how it works these are the things you're going to come up against but it doesn't mean yeah. it's not going to be brilliant all it means is that you need to know those things because we all want to thrive as small business owners but actually you've got to know how to survive first so you've got to know yeah. what the challenges are how to deal with those challenges and then you can fly yeah. It's, it's all about it's all about wanting to kind of help support reassure other people and because we're doing it in our own really down to earth heart and sleeve kind of personal tone of voice tones of voice then i think that's people are getting more out of it and are going to get more out of it i'm yeah. so excited for you I, I, it's <laughs> like, I've, I've been feeling like i've been thinking about today and getting like that little you know when you get a little tummy flip and thinking oh my gosh yeah it's just it's, no, so it's, it's really true what you say though because like i did a talk for the northern affinity a couple of weeks ago based Amazing. on the book and about you know six key steps for mastering the mindset of a self-employed person and at the end of it someone had said i feel like i've just had a hug and it was just oh, i think it's just people of, you know we're even in this world i'm incredibly happy in my business now and you know the difference from it's three it. four years ago to now is is incredible yeah. But you still have shit days. You still have a day where you're just like, oh, or a, a crap customer or, yeah. you know, nothing's going to be perfect, but it's how you then deal with it, isn't it? And exactly that. And I think, I, I think this is chapter eight in my book, eight or seven, but that is, you just hit on something really big because I think we go self-employed quite often because we've got this special skill, this talent that we want to share with the world. And we kind of love the idea of being our own boss, making all the decisions ourselves and doing everything our way, like well, where you want, where, where you want, when you want and how you want. But if you're not careful, it's really easy to kind of find that your clients are becoming bosses. So you've got yes. lots of other bosses and I've completely forgotten where I was going with that. No, <laughs> so this was the thing. This was the thing. So there's that phrase, isn't there? If you do a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, and actually, I think what that does is no. that really sets us up for thinking, oh, God, you know, I feel almost ungrateful that I'm doing this thing that I love doing. I'm getting paid good money, hopefully for doing this skill that I want to share with the world and sharing my sort of superpower or whatever you want to call it. But actually, you're still having bad days. But it's perfectly normal. So if I could, I'd ban that normal. expression. I really, I really have to sit on my hands when I see someone sharing that expression as a quote on Insta or Twitter yeah. or whatever, because I think it's not realistic. And we're not helping and supporting one another by pretending everything is unicorns and rainbows and everything is dandy <laughs> every day because when you've got the challenges nailed and you know how to deal with the like the eight myths that I bust in the book and the advice that you've given yours then I would say that then you're prepared but yeah. even then still doesn't mean that you're never going to get bad days because you will no. it's of course. yeah but the, the secret is knowing how to cope with them when you get them yeah, and there's jobs that you you know as a business owner you you are everything. You are your accountant, even if you've hired another accountant, yeah. you still have to do some. You your your marketing person, your your social media manager. You know, there's going to be something yeah. you don't like doing in all the mix, isn't there? I mean, anything yeah, to do with yeah. numbers for me is a big no no. I like I say that's the stuff I outsource to accountant and a financial guy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sure, it's hard at the beginning to pay out that money as well. But for me, it was worth it because I would spend days googling stuff if i didn't yeah. and i would probably still get it wrong and be fined by hmrc 
So to pay 100 quid a month yeah. or whatever to an accountant, it, it helps my mental, <laughs> mental health. To be honest. I'm 100% I'm completely with you. And it took yeah. me years to get, you it took me years to get around the mindset of I'm working for myself because I want to make money for me. Why the hell would I want to spend it on hiring somebody else? But actually, exactly like you say, it's not yeah. just the time it saves you, it's the pressure, it's like the headspace, it frees up knowing that yeah. you've got someone on your team who is an expert at this thing, whatever it is you outsource. So for me, I outsource now, I um, quite often pay somebody to proofread my own stuff, my own marketing, because yeah. I'm too close to it, can't see it. I've got IT support, wouldn't be without that, I've got two Macs, and now if they've there's a problem with one of them, they just remote in, they just fix it within yeah. seconds, that's probably the best 30 quid, 30 quid a month. That I spend on that yeah. accounts. I use um lovely Martin from Goldstag, give him a little plug because oh, he's yeah. great, he's so great. <laughs> yeah, um, but then this is this is compared to for like four, five, six years, my accountant was my ex-husband, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> and that was after we were divorced. Um, but yeah, it's it's just just as you say, I always say identify the tasks that A, you don't yeah. enjoy. B, you're not good at, and C, importantly, they're not making you money. And yeah. when you can see that you can, so say a task takes you 10, 10 hours, like, oh, doing my accounts, actually filing my accounts annually might take 10 hours. Yeah. And I might be thinking, oh my God, I can't afford to pay a professional accountant for 10 hours of work, but it's not 10 hours for them, is it? No. You're freeing up 10 hours of time that you then can earn, and you've got potentially 10 hours of billable time. Yeah. And an accountant who does this day in day out that's their speciality that's their superpower their special skill it might only take them four hours yeah so it's it's just this win having this little team of cheerleaders around you supporting you with the things that you don't enjoy and there's another side effect to it I think and something that's very often overlooked is the fact that when you're doing all these tasks that you know you're not good at, you can get to the end of the week or the end of the month and your self-esteem is down here. Because yes. you know, you, you had the idea of, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going self-employed because I want to do this thing I love 24-7. You know, whatever hours yeah. you're choosing to work, probably not 24-7, but oh, well. 15 hours a day or whatever, <laughs> you have this idea that you're going to be doing the web design or the copywriting or the editing, whatever it is, but that's not actually the reality. So you get to the end of the week and you realise you spent so much time doing all these tasks that you don't enjoy. You feel pretty bad about yourself because you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, this isn't yeah. what I have in mind. So that's why we need to know, you know, we're equipping people. Yeah. Everybody who's listening, we're equipping you with the information that you need to know how to outsource. Because when you can outsource, you can scale your business. You've got yes. so much more time involved. Yeah. And also moving away from retainer clients and um, charging by the hour, but that's a whole other. That's a whole well, other another day. Yes, and by the day, uh, yeah, I still have to do that one sometimes. But it, yeah, it's really true because I have a, a VA, Suzanne from Rightcloud, and she, you know, I hate WordPress with a passion. I really can't stand it, and every time I touch it, I seem to break the website or update to do or something. <laughs> Whereas I can just fire a blog to her and she's got it up in minutes. She's done the SEO. She's done it. And I'm like, oh, my God, because otherwise I'd be there forever and getting frustrated and annoyed and bringing my mood down and she can just do it. And yeah, then, yeah. And then that oh, gives you all your time back. It's like a gift, isn't it? It's like, hey, yeah, Helen, yeah. have your time back and then do the stuff that you <laughs> love, you know? Create a, create a work life that you love. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and it's nice day. as well to like hire other freelancers. I think that's the nice thing about it that you're not yeah. hiring big businesses. You are yeah. then creating your little network of other self-employed people, and yeah. you know you're sharing work. And I recommend Suzanne to quite a few people now. And you know if she ever gets asked about e-learning or something, she might send them my way. And it mm. it's just nice to have those connections and that support. And like I say, if something's doing my head in, I can just message her and go, "Do you know how to fix this?" <laughs> Yeah. And it's just so reassuring, isn't it, that they come back and just go, oh, yeah, leave it with me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I can feel Ooh. my shoulders drop. I can physically feel the tension drain from my body. So that's what all these yeah. fantastic people who are supporting us, that's what they do for us. It's yeah. amazing. 
but it is and, a and community say, it's just it's always so nice to be able to support the freelance community by giving someone else work that's yeah. something I talk about a lot and you know you could almost I feel like this is leading a little bit onto that kind of community over competition sort mm. of debate I mean look at this like when I heard you were writing a book that's kind of got a similar sort of audience to mine, I could have gone, whoa, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to unfollow her, I'm going to block her, you know, as as has happened in the past, happened to me. And I just think it's just, it's not the way ahead. Like, I'm going to be shouting, your, shouting about your book from rooftops when I've had a chance to read it. Um, <laughs> but I just think people are likely to go. I can imagine that on Amazon, there's probably going to be a people who bought this also bought this because yes. they feel as if they complement one another. But you know, even mm. if they were direct competition, I'd still be bigging you up because. But well, I think we've got slightly different angles though, because mine's very much fo focused on that thing of leaving this corporate toxic world yes. to change your mindset. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think I do think yours and mine work really well together. Yeah, they show there's some similar themes, yeah, but we've yeah. got different experiences. That we and different perspectives, well, different ways so. of describing them, different tones of voice. Yeah, yeah. I think so. But I just think a, a lot of people out there, if if you're listening to this and kind of thinking, you know, you, you're not already in the um, community over competition um, sort of mindset. I just think it's such an it's such a life changing choice because if you choose to become friends with the people who do the same job as you, it's just so powerful because those are the people who understand more than anybody out there the challenges that you're going through day to day they know what the difficult clients are like they know how to charge for these tricky projects when you get to know them better you can support advise one another you can help one another you can be a kind of someone to lean on like lean into that community and really make the best of helping one another be kind I just think kindness is so overlooked in business there's too much focus on the hassle sort of the hassle <laughs> there probably is too much focus on the hassle well, there's too much focus on the hustle and yes. I just don't think that that is the way for success because you have to take time out to reboot to relax to restore because if you're not doing that Anne Lamott said um almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few moments even you and um I like I, yeah I just love that quote I just think it, it it's so important to remember that you can't none of us are built to just work eight hours a day flat out that's why we need to take breaks we yeah. need to focus on doing things that we love I sat and did a flipping jigsaw puzzle yesterday I love a jigsaw do you I, know what I, I went to a car boot sale in the morning which is one of my literal favorite Sunday things to do <laughs> went to this car boot sale bought so much stuff bought this jigsaw that was basically box vintage boxes of, of matches all kind of oh, collage right. and I love vintage packaging I love typography oh, I love design. Yeah. so it was a beautiful day we got the jigsaw board out which is a big piece of wood that my I mom need one of those on. big 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 piece of wood plonked it onto the garden chair sat on the garden sofa and just did this puzzle in the sun and it was no. so restorative if that doesn't sound too lame I just yeah. was like oh because you find flow don't you doing the things that you love yeah and I must admit like I mean I have been doing too much the last few months because I you know I even taking two months off client work to finish the book then doing all the PR like you're saying before it takes so much time and I did not yeah. expect that so I've been working flat out for months and now the client work started up again alongside doing mm -hmm. all this and it has been crazy, but the one thing I've really been missing is my crochet and my weaving because they're so, oh, wow. you know, they're really that mindful thing of you just have to sit and count. So yeah. you can't be thinking about other things and they make me sit still, which is something that I don't, well, I sit still at the desk all the time, but my my brain's always going. So things like that I love. And I, I must admit, there's two jigsaws I've got on my Amazon list that I, I desperately want. Like one's just a colour gradient, which it looks impossible to do, oh, but it's wow. just so beautiful. <laughs> this big rainbow oh, nice. gradient and yeah they, it is lovely to just sit and, and do something like that but yeah. it takes your brain away from emails and oh god the bing 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 of notifications all day yeah 
I, have, I don't know about you, but like I, I remember the adrenaline so much and how it kind of keeps you going. And I remember thinking, oh my, because I have a sort of natural tendency to get to overwhelm, like mm. bird burnout type thing. And um, I'm too. somebody that my energy is either 100 miles an hour or I'm like parked up on the driveway on brakes. Yep. I, there's there's yeah. very little middle ground between the two and I'll go from there to there. Yeah. Um, and so I have to be very, very aware and conscious of the signs of burnout. So. I just had to get really good at setting boundaries and I was yeah. rubbish at it for such a long time which is why I could talk about it with such authority well this is it isn't it yeah because I mean at the moment so... I'm trying to push back with some boundaries on you know I'm not an employee so I'm not at my desk nine till five if I want <laughs> if I got something else on and then I'm working in the evening and that is okay that's that's the life we live and you've got to push back on these boundaries sometimes yeah and... yeah yeah but it's very difficult at first isn't it it's it's really hard when you're still establishing yourself and building your confidence and finding sure. your flow yeah um, for sure and there's that tendency to just accept any work just because it's work isn't there it's kind of like oh I should be grateful for it because it's been offered me and that's great but as you become more and more established and more confident in exactly what it is you want to do and what sort of projects and what sort of work and what sort of clients are going to take you closer to your goal as a business owner and a, as an individual importantly um it, it becomes easier to say no but yeah. I think the first time you do that the first time you're kind of like god you know I really don't want to take on this work but actually how do I walk away from this with my head held tight and not letting the client down because I, I don't know if this is a, a female thing but I think particularly as women we have this don't let people down sort of drummed yeah. into us from an early age and, and we've all, always got to be selfless and putting other people first and, and this kind of thing and um and I think actually this is another way in which community comes in because when you know your community and you know the other people who do the same or a similar job to you chances are you'll get to know them for their strengths and their skills as well as the kind of the more personal attributes but work-wise like professionally okay well this person specializes in writing blog posts whereas I specialize in writing web copy so if a client comes to me wanting blog posts my natural instinct is okay what other freelancer can I share that work with because if I can go back to the client and say do you know what at the moment, this is not the right fit for me. But if you're, um, if you like, I can recommend a trusted colleague who may be able to help you or who may be a better fit at this time. And that is you solving the problem, walking away with your head held high, and knowing that you've helped out another freelancer in the process. So it's all good stuff. Yeah. Oh no, it's something that in the session at the end of the day, which we've pre-recorded with Emma Cownley, we've been talking about that as well. Just this oh, idea. Yeah, of, she's amazing. She's amazing, isn't she? she and honestly, I logged in with her. She sat there looking so just perfect and I was like oh my god you, she's just too cool for me just I watched cool. one of her videos the other day I forget which one it was but it was just like oh god she's so good at this she she's is so good yeah, yeah. No, so... I must catch up with her sometime actually it's been a while since I spoke to her but she's just great yeah so who no, else are you seeing today um so I've got Steve Holland from Being Freelance and Steve. Goodman from Freelance Heroes. Oh amazing. I'm going on Clubhouse with or separately. Separately, but one after the other. Probably should Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so, well there's laws coming up to be honest, and then the evening session where we're gonna have some games and a quiz and I'm gonna make a fool of myself with one of them. A um, quiz. I love a quiz. Yeah. Oh, You've got Joe and Joelle, haven't you? I'm working yeah, with tomorrow night. Moment on some oh, strategy oh. stuff. She's just amazing, and I love Joe to bits. Yeah. We have fairly regular uh, WhatsApp kind of um, chats and Zoom calls. She's just a, a, another perfect example. She does the same job as me, but you know we both got very different approaches, and yeah, it's just nice to have her as part of my kind of team, I guess. You know, yeah, me too. Friend, it's friendship it's team. Practice, yeah no that's the thing I mean when you like I say when you reached out when you you know I was because I, I can't remember what I posted I think I was having a crisis of confidence at the time and you yeah. and you said oh let's have a call about yeah, the book yeah. and whatever and that was so lovely that and I I was like oh this Sarah is like you know you're on this pedestal for me you've done your book it's amazing <laughs> and oh, she's, she's offering to talk to me <laughs> it was really it was oh. lovely and obviously we kept the conversation going and 
yeah, we get to meet up next week. I know, like we've kept conversation week. going big time because even though we haven't, yeah. I don't think we've had a Zoom call before because we did a walk and talk, no. didn't we? Yeah, but we we're did, like yeah. big time into the into the voice notes, aren't we? So. Yeah. We're just kind of forever leaving these big, long voice notes on LinkedIn or uh, or Instagram. Me, or me saying waffle, waffle. <laughs> Going up on one and then waffle, waffle. It's just so nice though, isn't it, to have somebody yeah. to actually physically just feel like you have someone to chat to who, as, as I say, who really understands. I mean, yeah. I really understand the process and the excitement and the, the feeling that, oh, my God, I'm going to burn out. But actually, I don't think you will because even though you feel like you've been running on adrenaline, for such a long time, I feel like the, the process of the launch, it's not just like, here, here's launch day and then you're back to normal. Drop. It's, yeah. it's, it's kind of a wave. So you'll be riding the wave for a long time, I think. Yeah. Just make sure you do schedule in time because I, I, I didn't do enough of that. And I was no. trying to... Well, at least this week at, when we go to London on Thursday, we're staying for four days for a bit of a break. So at least that gets me away from the computer and from instagram and from all the things that yeah just that's constantly. such a brilliant idea i don't think for yeah. a minute you're going to stay off instagram like we're going to be well, doing no, boomerangs from the award ceremony on thursday <laughs> yeah cheers <laughs> oh. i'm so excited yeah i know and i've ended up with i had nothing to wear now i've got five dresses oh wow <laughs> I'm really <laughs> I've done them all online. I must have ordered about twelve in the end, and I've just oh, kept sending oh. them back. <laughs> so now I've ended up with four that I'm like, yeah, I might get away with that. So oh, we'll see what I wear. Oh, no I haven't idea. Something. I haven't bought something new. Like quite a few friends were like, "Oh, it's a great opportunity to buy something new." I'm not really a, much of a shopper. Um, well, I'm not, but link uh, lockdown chub has meant that nothing fits. <laughs> The long, the lockdown pounds that have expanded to the chest area have, me have meant that none of my dresses fit. So. They call it the quarantine fifteen, don't they? At least yes. in the states, fifteen extra pounds from quarantine. I'm wearing a dress that my friend, who's actually coming with me, like my freelancer friend, who's also a copywriter, I've invited her to come with me as my plus one because she is the person I wouldn't have entered without her basically I didn't know it was a thing for starters and then I just assumed that certain other people who shall remain nameless would have swept the board and that there well, was no point in in entering so she just taught me out of my own imposter syndrome which quite often needs to be done and um and it's yeah, funny you I'm say that though sure because the person that yeah that we think is going to sweep the board um she's the one that convinced me to put my application in because I'd mostly written it and then I was like oh no there's no point she's going to win and then it was her that said really? put it in and then me and her are, are shortlisted together so oh, amazing. Um, yeah I'm glad I'm not up against either of you because I feel like <laughs> oh you're two good friends you know I don't I don't want to be yeah I don't know oh, so I, I, just, I just I was telling her um we all got together for the copywriters conference on Friday and I was telling her I said oh, I'm gonna wear this dress it's black it's short it's got it's cut stretchy because I yeah got tummy <laughs> like a bit more tummy than I had before and um and it's got bits of glitter in it and and she went oh is that the dress you wore for your 50th birthday and I went yeah thanks for that <laughs> <laughs> oh no <I> see. <laughs> but yeah nobody no. else knows that apart from hey, everybody yes, who's no. there. <laughs> to be fair, I would have been wearing one of mine if yeah yeah, but it'll be the oh. first time I've worn heels. Actually, the second time because I'm wearing heels. I'm not doing heels. I don't do heels. Not, not unless we want a trip to A and E, <sighs> which I think I prefer not to on that night. So <laughs> I, I, I don't. I haven't for nearly two years. No, I but can't even wear flats without yeah suffering at my, the moment. My heels so. are big, really big. Oh, no. So yeah, like they're about that. <laughs> And yeah, and and I'm quite tall to begin with, so it will, yeah. it will be nice to get back in heels. I think. So I'm gonna be the I'll be the midget. We just have to hope that neither of us falls off the stage. Yes. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if anyone wonders what we're talking about, anyway, we've both been shortlisted for the IPSE IPSE awards, um, which are taking place on Thursday night. So which is the category you're in? Wellbeing. Well, because being, I've yeah. done so much to spread the word about yeah. why it's important for everybody to prioritise the well-being. So, yeah, yeah. it's nice to have a bit of recognition. It's lovely to be shortlisted. Super yeah. stoked about it. I, I couldn't have picked a category that I most wanted to be shortlisted yeah. for because that just feels like my mission at the moment. Yeah. 
Are you so I think, no, I'm in one for this one. So just the, oh, uh, the outstanding freelancer. Where did I see? In your email signature or something? That's the Digital Women Awards that I'm up oh, for yeah. too. So Digital Woman of the Year and Digital Freelancer of the Year. And then I was put on the top 40 digital women to watch list. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> Oh. That was back in February, and we still don't know the results because of COVID and everything. They just keep putting off this really? ceremony, so they're hopefully going to announce it in November. But um, crossed. no idea where we're going with that one, so oh. we'll see. But yeah, that was a nice surprise to have been shortlisted and put on that list. So yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Oh right. Well, I know you need to get off, so. Um, I thought it's been lovely to have you on and to chat. It's and been lovely to chat to you keep, too. Keep sending the messages and we'll uh, yeah, <laughs> have a drink on Thursday. Yeah, you at oh. Place. And I will, oh, I promise yeah. I will post you a book if I've not already. I, <laughs> I feel really bad. So just before we came on, she was like, I'm still waiting for mine. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I, I don't know so we need to double check <laughs> that said though we've had parcels go missing and my next door neighbour texted me and said have you had any posts lately and I said no not for about four days she drove up to the Royal oh. Mail sorting office and said oh all well, our posts waiting up there because they've got no postman to cover up post person to cover yeah. our round at the moment I'm like could um, us because I've been following yeah. up people on parcels that I knew I was expecting going it hasn't arrived it hasn't <laughs> arrived I'd like a refund <laughs> oh no it's not, it's not their fault at all anyway oh, well so, so might, uh, let's blame them anyway then but yeah, yeah. I'll get one to you let's yeah let's blame them. I did promise you could have so, <laughs> yeah right well, for the rest of the day i'm so i'm yeah. so in awe of your organizational like <laughs> skills because i didn't get a launch anything for my for mine on national freelancers day last year and i and i see that you've done all this and i'm kind of like oh, why didn't i think of doing something like do that follow up one you can do a follow-up one i could do, <laughs> we, could do we could do a joint one at some point a, a sort of <laughs> second launch yeah <laughs> an in-person one that would be nice wouldn't it oh yeah yeah. Right, well, I'll see you Thursday. Right, yes. Enjoy the rest Me. of your day. You too. <laughs> Lots yeah. of love. Bye. Bye. <laughs>